Okay, so when we start thinking about uh, life safety in fires, what we're really aiming to do is to reduce the probability that uh, fires are going to occur in the first place. And secondly, if fires do occur, we want to try and ensure that the rate of fire growth and production and spread of fire effluents is slow so that we protect the escape routes for as long as, as necessary. Uh, this slide here shows um, the T-squared fire curves, growth curves, that engineers frequently use. And basically it illustrates the point that nearly all fires start very small and then after a period of time they grow very rapidly. And for this reason people can underestimate the hazard they're in and can then suddenly find themselves trapped. Now in order to uh, understand the way hazards develop in fires and to produce engineering tools for this, the concept we've developed is, uh, and I've had a lot of involvement with, is that of the fractional effective dose. The term that we look for is the time at which occupants will be overcome by visual smoke, the time at which they're going to be overcome by heat radiation or, or heat exposure generally, and the time at which they're going to be overcome by the asphyxiant gases in the smoke. And basically this is illustrated in this uh, diagram here. So on the left here I have a set of fire curves for heat, smoke and toxic gases in an in a armchair furniture fire. And what we're interested in is what is the sequence of hazards that are going to be uh, offered, if you like, to uh, an occupant of a room where this fire has occurred. Typically what happens is the first thing that a person experiences is smoke. They get enveloped in smoke and the optical density of the smoke makes it difficult for them to orientate themselves and find their way out to the exits. If the smoke is occurring in a place remote from where they are, for example in the escape route, then they may, may be deterred from entering that escape route in order to escape. And then the other thing of course is heat, radiant heat directly from the fire or from a hot upper layer or from being engulfed in an upper layer. And then the other hazard is the toxic gases that occur in the smoke. Um, now in this particular example the fire takes off so quickly that as you can see all these curves, FED curves, occur more or less at the same time. Now on this, on this uh, diagram here, what we're looking for is the time at which any of these curves, the curve for smoke, heat, sensory irritation or asphyxiant gases, the time when any of these curves crosses one on the y-axis. Because that is the calculated time at which each of these hazards reaches a critical level that would incapacitate the occupant and prevent them from escaping from the fire. In the lower case example here, we have a slightly slower developing fire, and so as you can see there's a bit more separation in the various hazards. The first hazard confronted by the victim in the room would be the irritant smoke, and then secondly the effects of the asphyxiant gases, dominated very much in this case by hydrogen cyanide, and then after that, about a minute after that, they would be overcome by heat.